Coming up next on Cameroon Feeling, Kibonin Fee. Her outfits have been worn by international celebrities like the actress Lupita Nyong'o. Her clothes have been showcased at the prestigious New York Fashion Week or even on Vogue Italia. With her, the togo can be traditionally inspired and presented in a modern way. Kibonen infuses Cameroonian culture and contemporary designs. She's a guest on Cameroon Feeling, coming up next. Coming up next on Cameroon Feeling, a young Takan Enna, pro footballer, intentional leader, and book author. Vice captain of the Indomitable Lions at a certain point. He's played in eight countries the FIFA World Cup 2010 and 2014, the Africa Cup of Nations in 2010 and 2015. He has a master's degree in sports management and is looking at a future in sports inclined educational and management projects. Want to know more about him? Stay put. Coming up next on Cameron Feeling. I'm a young and welcome keep born in. Thank you. How are you doing good. this morning? Good, exhausted, but good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so as I said earlier, we're merging fashion and sports today. That's why we want you to give your perspective on fashion and likewise sports. But when we talk about sports, we cannot start without having your little opinion on AFCON 2021 that happened right here in Cameroon. What can you say about the performance aspect of it? Well, for me, when I think about the AFCON, I'm first thinking about the performance of the host. Yes. Which is, you know, after 50 years of hosting the AFCON in Cameroon, mm -hmm. it's magic. And just how we did it. Of course, it comes with a lot of stuff, but that's the lion spirit. We did overcome it at the end, and everybody saw it. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the performance uh, of the lions, like I like to always look at it from as a fan yeah. and also as a sport analyst. Uh -huh. As a fan, of course, I'm disappointed we didn't keep the trophy home. Mm -hmm. But as a sport analyst, I'm very satisfied mm -hmm. with uh, the engagement, the spirit we showed, and just the way we grabbed that third position. For me, it's like, that was the finals. That was the combination of everything. <laughs> so beautiful. The show of resilience, that's the fighting spirit. Yeah. And then, keep on in, the cultural aspect, did you like it? Fully represented oh in the sports event? Oh my goodness, event? the opening ceremony was wow. Like, I could live for that opening ceremony. It yeah. was beautiful. It represented all the four regions of Cameroon. The color, the setting, the stage. You know, it was so beautiful. And I had a lot of friends who were saying, wow, is that Cameroon? And we were like, yes, it's Cameroon. Cultural representation was amazing. Mm -hmm. Talk less of the Togo, which literally oh, yes. was all over the place. Mm -hmm. Like, for me, that was really a clear example of where fashion meets with sports yeah before we even did this that was a clear example and it's certain things which we take for granted mm -hmm. when they come to the spotlight it takes a different direction so i was just it was wonderful i'm so proud of my country the splash event happened this last weekend and i was mesmerized seeing a young <laughs> strut the wrong way like he's been doing this for years mm -hmm. We're going to get into that part because I'm sure um, the production team has to make the viewers see what I'm talking about. <laughs> but first off, we have to get to know you a little bit better if you're trying to merge fashion and sports. I know that you started with Little Foot FC. Yes, true. So who gave you an opportunity and how did you embrace that when you were growing up? Well, I didn't start up playing football. Mm -hmm. I was into different things. I was doing dancing. A uh, few people know about that. Okay. Yes, I was doing uh, acrobatics or gymnastics, you would call it that. Mm -hmm. I was into arts, also drawing. So yes. I was a little bit into many other things. Mm -hmm. But we moved city, we went into Tico. And mm -hmm. nobody there does gymnastics. Mm -hmm. Nobody dances. Yeah. And everybody played football. So yeah, I'm a young man. My... Uh, People in my age group are all playing football, so I have to jump inside, and that's how I got into football. Okay. And I discovered that it was fun, and mm -hmm. uh, from Tico, I just kept playing football. And you were inspired by your mother's community work. Yes. Tell us about that, how yes. that implanted fashion in you. Right. You know, a lot of times, the way the environment you grow in affects you, whether you like it or not. So my mom has always been into community development, home economics, and all of that. So um, she, you know, whenever we went to any um, community, she would bring women together, start teaching them crocheting, teaching them how to do backrests and all of that. So she was very involved in crafts, you yeah. know. 
and when we were young we always had our togo dresses on you know like a little girl i had my togo dress my mom had it my dad had it we always had family pictures in that togo dress so it was that thing which was deep inside of me and i grew up just loving to make stuff yeah. craft to, to just not me necessarily making it myself but working with people who could get stuff made for me mm -hmm. so that was just a natural part of me and um, growing up I when I was in university I used to always make my dresses my suits to go to church okay. my, all of that so yeah. the way it happened mm -hmm. I went to the US not even knowing that there was a profession like being a fashion designer yeah um, because I was heading to that yeah. you went to New York where I heard they swallow people oh, yeah. and you succeeded to stand out. Yes. How, how was that possible? <laughs> you see, these are the things when God has an assignment for you, he puts you in a place where you're able to develop that assignment. But when you connect with him, he, he makes it easier for you. Mm -hmm. So it's not about what you do, but yeah. the fact that you're in the place where he wants you to be able to achieve that which he has for you. So for me, New York was tough. But mm -hmm. I got to New York, I had a boutique in New York. Mm -hmm. which was so weird but it was so simple and these are the things which make me know that there is a divine purpose in what I'm doing because the mm -hmm. things that I do are so simple it, it appears so simple mm -hmm. but it's so much work behind but when it's execution time it's so simple so I got to New York and I was I had a shop a boutique in Harlem mm -hmm. you know Harlem is that place where it's Africa and it's yeah. all of that mm -hmm. but then I realized that my work was still getting was actually getting swallowed up in Harlem Mm. Because How there so? was too much African okay. stuff. I mean, they sell African stuff everywhere. And people expect to buy it at a certain price. Mm -hmm. But I knew that what I had was not for that certain price. Mm -hmm. So I started figuring out how can I get to downtown? How can I get to Fifth Avenue? How can I get to a more mainstream community? Mm -hmm. And I thought going back to school was going to help me, yeah. you know, do that. So I decided to go back to fashion school. I got mm -hmm. a degree in fashion. And through that, it exposed me to Mercedes Best Fashion Week New York, interning at Dinner Karen and Ralph Lauren. So it was just a lot of things that came up and because I chose to equally make that move, mm. get out of my comfort zone. And from there it's just been on another level. Talking about getting out of your comfort zone, I'm sure it's the same thing you experienced in the national